off air. Here we go. It says we're live. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining a special edition of Guns and Gadgets Live. You know I don't do these often, but uh, I wanted to have a friend of mine who I had the pleasure of meeting out at SHOT Show for the first time, somebody I've been watching his channel a lot longer than I've actually run this channel, and uh, that's uh, William from The Daily Shooter. He is actually here today. Will yes. say hi to everybody. I, I am here. The internet problems have been fixed, so we're good to go today. All right. All right. So uh, thanks for joining me, brother. I know uh, you're out in California, and it's a three-hour difference, so thank you for taking time out of your life to uh, come talk yeah. to the people here. Much easier for me. It's still only 4.30 in the afternoon, so we're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, last week I got a bunch of emails right after you did your video about the uh, confiscation on the AR pistol that took place, uh, and I got a lot of people questioning why I didn't cover it, and my intention was to have you come on here and tell people what you know, uh, since it's your neck of the woods and you have more information and a better ability to get that than I do. So if you would, wouldn't mind, actually, uh, give us a rundown of what happened and uh, what you might have heard since that took place. Well, basically what happened was um, with registration, if you had an AR, um, let's say just a few years ago that had a bullet button on it, uh, it wasn't considered an assault weapon by California state law because it had that bullet button, which was considered at the time a fixed magazine. But the California legislature determined that, or, or at least they thought that that was some type of workaround to the law, when in fact, at the time, it was actually written into the law that you could use a bullet to remove the magazine. And as long as it was, it was locked into place and the bullet be, could be considered a tool. Well, they decided to challenge that and uh, make anything that had a bullet button considered an assault weapon. And so they started this whole registration scheme saying that anybody that had a bullet button rifle would have to register it by this specific date. Uh, I believe it was uh, July 1st of 2018. And uh, if you didn't have it registered by that time, then you had an illegal assault weapon for all purposes. And so what happened was this guy at the last minute, I believe it was June 20th is what they said in the video that he actually went through the registration process. And part of the registration process is submitting photos of the weapon in question. And the, the photos have to show certain sides of it. They have to show the serial number. It has to show basically everything to do with that firearm. And then the firearm cannot be changed after that. So you can't change the firearm once it's been submitted and registered. So he went through that process. The problem was, is that he registered a pistol that was technically illegal. And so when he submitted his photos, they took those photos, they analyzed them and uh, sent law enforcement to his house to come pick them up. And so they used that registration to find out what this guy had in his safe and went and got him. Now, did they, how many guns do you know, if you knew, how many guns did they take from him? From what I understand, they only took two guns. So the, the things that I still can't find yet are whether or not they had a warrant, um, because in my video I had mentioned I wanted to talk to people about what, what the police did wrong and what I felt that this guy did wrong. And one of the things I've been trying to research is whether or not they had a warrant, because if they didn't have a warrant, he didn't have to let them in. Absolutely. Uh, I would just tell him, you know, uh, um, you know, I'd like to get a lawyer, come back when you have a warrant and I have a lawyer, something like that, you know, and uh, I don't know whether they did or didn't, but they went in, made access, and they saw the rifles in that configuration, or excuse me, the pistols in that configuration at the time they entered his house. If he had had them separated by California state law, it, it wouldn't have been a pistol, even if he registered it as. Right, right. So there was a couple things that could have been done in order to protect him, but still he registered it, and that registration led to the confiscation directly, so. Okay. Have you heard of any yeah. other cases taking place? Uh, there, there was one in Bakersfield. There was a, a guy who registered. Uh, this guy was kind of a knucklehead, though, because in California, we all pretty much know you can't have NFA stuff. You can't have silencers and things like that. So anything that anything that allows you to have fun, make shooting more enjoyable, it's it's illegal. OK, so, you know, make sure your squirt guns registered type stuff. Anyway, uh, this guy took a photo of his firearms and had silencers in the background and other NFA items submitted his registration just like the other guy did but he submitted it much earlier than this guy and sure enough they saw what was in the photos and they came and did a complete raid on this guy's house and took absolutely everything multiple felony charges on several different levels um he had um you know pistols that were off roster and non-registered he had nfa items so that was the first one that i remember hearing but again regardless of what he had 
because I don't think that he should have been in trouble for any of that stuff. That's all, you know, standard stuff you can have in just about every other free state. Nonetheless, it was the registration that led them to his house. So again, you know, you got to don't register whatever you can do. People, people laughed at me all the time for in my videos showing fin grips and in my videos showing mag locks and stuff like that. I know who watches the videos and uh, California, they don't care about the constitution. They don't, they'll throw the constitution right out the window every single time. It's just a speed bump for them. The second they go over it, you're screwed. But it, it's just like registration. If you have it on film, if you have it on Instagram or YouTube, um, or you send them the pictures and, you know, they're going to get you for it. Ugh, that sucks. Talk about tyranny. It's miserable. That's terrible. Yeah. Um, I want to say uh, welcome to, uh, there's a bunch of your viewers that have come over. Uh, so thank you, everybody coming over from the Daily Shooter side. Uh, my name is Jared. I run this channel. It's Guns and Gadgets. Uh, this is, I, mine is mostly a 2A news channel where uh, you're going to get the latest news, whether it's good or bad, no matter where it's happening in the U.S. And I try to get it that same day. If not, it's usually a couple days before you hear about it anywhere else. Uh, so thank you all for joining. Um, and uh, I see your comments. We'll get to some of those shortly, but thank you and welcome and hope you decide to stick around. Um, yeah, so that's not mine, guys, really do appreciate it. Sorry about last time for those people that tuned in, uh, had internet problems, the router went down. It was, it was horrible. While he was doing his live stream, I actually had to run down to Spectrum and get a new router and try and make it back in time, but I didn't make it. So thanks for coming back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for the effort, brother. It's appreciated. Yeah. Um, so because you have an intimate knowledge of the danger of uh, Kamala or Kamala Harris, however she says her name, um, could you please let the viewers know uh, exactly how dangerous she is? And because she's such a great speaker, um, there's actually legitimacy that she could be elected. <laughs> Kamala Harris is the worst possible thing that could happen to guns, period. Um, I think she's actually worse than anybody else that's running right now. And that's because she has a record that you can follow all the way back down to where she uh, was a prosecutor in San Francisco. When she was a prosecutor in San Francisco, that's when the Heller decision came out. And when the Supreme Court came down uh, on the Heller decision, she disagreed with it 100 um, percent. She disagreed that we have the right even to protect ourselves in our own homes. Uh, she actually got angry at that fact because at the time uh, she was trying to pass laws where you would have to lock up your firearms separate from your locked up ammunition. And when Heller came out, basically giving you the right to defend yourself in your home, she knew that that could be used against what she was trying to do. And so um, she is she's a nightmare, not to mention when she became uh, the attorney general of the state of California she actively fought against the second amendment it's not like somebody who just approved things or or you know kind of fought against the second amendment she is an advocate for gun control she is a 100 percent advocate for gun control she supports you know all of the gun control groups and she will twist everything in order to get her way if she were to be president if she were to actually be president um it would be Clinton times 2.0, you know what I mean? It, you'd see another assault weapons ban, magazine bans, and she would do everything in her power to get it, including this whole new, <clears throat> excuse me, this whole new emergency uh, action thing. I think she would actually use that to her benefit as well. She's bad news. Yeah, it's, uh, it's what I'm hearing. And when you did a video on her, that was like two, three weeks ago, uh, it raised my eyes uh, or my eyebrows because I, well, I've heard about her now that she's a, a senator. I didn't know everything you talked about in that video. So uh, everybody here on the East Coast doesn't really know about her. So I'm glad you you could share that. And I mean, <laughs> whatever comes out of the Democrat side right now is going to be anti-gun. That's what they're running on, period, point blank. Uh, and since the the first of the year, uh, it's an it, we've just been inundated at a rate we've never seen before in this country on gun control. And un unlike the last two years where the quote-unquote Republicans had control of all three branches, they did nothing. Uh, the Democrats, they got the House and they're they're firing on all cylinders. I mean, we have two big bills coming up for vote this coming week, possibly a third. Uh, and that is uh, HR 8, which is the uh, universal background check bill, which looks to make uh, personal transfers illegal. Um, any gun show uh, purchases illegal, unless you actually go physically to an FFL. 
Uh, and then there is HR 1112-1112, which is called the Enhanced Background Check System, which is looking to get away, just do away with the current FBI NICS three-day safety net, where if you you aren't familiar out there, if you go to a gun, sh gun shop and purchase a gun and say your name is similar to someone who has a criminal record, they'll put you on a delay and they have up to three business days to come back with a check. And if they don't, then that sale goes through no matter what, you get your gun. Under this new, new bill that uh, they put in and it's gonna be voted on this week, it's gonna strip that from the system altogether, institute a 10 business day uh, check window it also says in there that delays can happen. So it's given the FBI the okay to create a delay for no problem, no reason. Uh, and then at the end of the 10 days, 10 business days, if your check doesn't come back, you don't get the gun. You can uh, petition the FBI for one more 10 uh, day window. And then if they do that and they don't come back at the end of that, you still don't get the firearm. Uh, the, the problem with that is, is the new system they want to put in is based off of business days, whereas the NICS system is based off of calendar days. After 30 calendar days, your NICS check is no longer valid. So if you don't take possession of that gun within that 30 days, you're screwed. You don't get it. So this new system could very easily tack on weekends and holidays uh, sandwiched in between these two 10 business day uh, stretches and go past that 30-day window. So it's a back a backdoor way about uh, you know banning people from purchasing firearms. Yeah, man. And I'm telling you right now, people have to be people need to be really, really careful with this stuff, because what they're talking about with these background checks and everything else, these are all some of those common sense type things that um, even the Republicans in some cases can get behind if they think if they think that they have the support. So all they need to do is just have that feeling that this could be supported because it's um, it's just background checks. It's something we already do. So we're just enhancing that. I'm sure people would support that. And if we don't speak up on things like that, for all those people that think, oh, it's not going to make it through the House. Oh, it's not going to be signed by the president. Remember that when it comes to gun control, and he's already proven it, that when it comes to gun control, these are all poker chips for him, okay, to be bet here and there and traded and stuff for deals, to be worked out for other things that he would want. And so you've seen him sit at the table. Do you remember when uh, Feinstein got all giddy and stuff when she heard that, you know, he could it would be OK with red flag laws? Sure enough, look what happens a few months later. Everybody's pushing red flag laws. So if people think this is going to die in the House because the House is controlled by the Democrats and Senate's you know, controlled by Republicans, all they need is to not hear from us and it's over. Absolutely. And I get a lot of pushback because most of my videos I'll put up. You know, I'll have a link to the bill and uh, a link to whatever uh, state legislature is involved. And I tell people, call your legislator, even if they're anti-gun. I mean, it doesn't get any worse than my where I am right now uh, in Massachusetts. Uh, we hate, well, they, not we. The politicians hate firearms. Uh, they hate the Second Amendment. They hate the Constitution. I got Elizabeth Warren and Senator Markey, who doesn't even live in Massachusetts, but he's a senator here, figure that out. And my personal uh, representative in Congress is Jim McGovern, who is about as dirty as any of them. And I know he watches this every now and then, so he'll be the thumb down. But uh, I still call these people. I still send them emails. If I can be near their office hours, I'll pop in. I mean, I, I even got to see Mara Healy, at, uh, who's our attorney general, at a, a union event at, uh, at uh, Gillette Stadium. So you got you to gotta do a little bit of work, guys and gals. If we just d ignore it and say, ah, it's going to pass anyway. Silence is consent, and that's what they're hoping on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love those uh, auto replies that I get back from Diane Feinstein. You know, <laughs> you always send those auto replies, letting you know that you know your your voice is important and that she cares to hear. But it's like, look, I just spent about twenty paragraphs long telling you off. So let's uh, see how that works out. Yeah. That about enough for your ass. Yeah. <laughs> the. Uh... The third one uh, that I did, I did the video today about these bills that are coming up this week. The third one is is something that everybody needs to know about because it's kind of gone under the radar. It was only introduced about 17 days ago, and they're already going to vote on it. And it's uh, HR 1263. Long and short of it, it's looking to take any semi-automatic rifle, AR, AK, precision rifle, whatever, uh, as long as it has the capability of accepting a magazine, they want to put it under the NFA. So that means the six-month delay, the $200 tax stamp, the whole shindig off of 
semi-automatic rifle, and that's what they're pushing for. Now, these three bills will pass the House, no question. Um, oh, for sure. We got to see what happens in the Senate because we have, you know, supposedly two A senators who have. I mean, look at Marco Rubio; he actually put in uh, the the national red flag bill in the Senate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, as long as Benchmade isn't, you know, supporting everything, then we should be okay. <laughs> Knife check. You carrying one? You carrying a Benchmade? Yeah, I I had to switch it. <laughs> I was carrying a Benchmade. I even went to the Benchmade booth at Shot Show. I had not carrying it anymore. Now I have my Kershaw in my pocket. There you go. But, Kershaw. Uh, <laughs> Kershaw. Yeah, it, it's, that's how it is now, man. Screw that. I was really pissed. Um, nonetheless, I mean, back on that topic, man. That's See, that, that's kind of what I'm talking about. That's worse than the Clinton ban. I mean, this is outright ridiculous. So if I have a Mini 14, which other than maybe like a flash hider doesn't have any of the evil features that a lot of these Democrats are, are going after. It's essentially a ranch rifle, a hunting rifle, a short, you know, it's nothing, right? It's got nothing on, but it's semi-automatic and it can have a detachable magazine. It's, it's unbelievable because what gets me about this is that absolutely none of this would go after the criminal element. You're spending my tax money. You're spending your time, your legislative time, you're spending all of this government energy to do things that only affect law-abiding citizens. None of this stuff that you are proposing will stop anything, absolutely nothing. If you tell me, if, if I'm hell-bent on getting somebody and you tell me that I can't have a gun, then I will find another way or I'll find a different way to get a gun. That's just the way that it is with people. Until you stop or, or until you control the human element, which is impossible, then it doesn't matter what tools you have. The Democrats act like nobody died from anything until guns were invented. Right. So back in the Middle Ages, when they used to siege castles and bow and arrows were flying over the top and people were dying, that didn't really happen because nobody died until guns were invented. I mean, give me a break. As long as there are rocks, people are going to use them to hurt other people. Oh, yeah, absolutely. In the same BS that they're pushing with all these the extreme risk protection or the red flag bills, they're all saying that they save lives and they save people from, from committing suicide. Um, no, they don't. Because, again, if somebody is has made that decision, they're going to follow through no matter what the tool is. It's just an implement. But, they, you know, the, the sheep fall for it and, you know, they eat it up so that gets in the vote. Yeah. And, and you know, the other thing too, with the, with red flag, you have to remember that uh, they talk about a mental disorder. Okay. So let's say that somebody has a, a mental condition that might make them prone to violence. Um, what they forget is that on the left, those anti-gunners, there are uh, quite a few mental problems there as well. I mean, you've heard the news stories where uh, people on the left, anti-gun, whatever the case is, will see somebody in a, uh, in a store that's open carrying and they'll start writing how they wanted to kill that person because they saw him open carrying a gun. So what's going to stop somebody who's hell bent on killing somebody just because they saw them with a gun from saying uh, or filing a, a bad police report? You know, basically Jesse Smolletting something and, uh, you know, getting <laughs> getting somebody's guns taken away from them where they have to fight back. OK, yeah, they're going to get in trouble in the long run because they filed a false police report. But again, these people are off their rocker. They don't. Once they see your gun, they hate you. You're you're not even human to them. So nothing's going to stop them from filing a, a false report. Exactly. And we're already seeing all the red flags that are being taken advantage of. I actually, I had a study that I was I forgot to pull up on the screen, but uh, they were saying that there were over 1,700 guns seized last year alone just on red flags and no due process. Every every case out there, no due process. Yeah, I, it killed me when Trump said that. Uh, when he said, you know, yeah, I'm all for taking the guns and then I'll do the due process thing later. What? Yeah. What are you talking about? Do the due process thing later that there's no such thing as due process later. If it comes later, it's not due process. You can't come into my house because somebody said they think that maybe I'm dangerous. Take my property, infringe on my rights and then tell me if you want them back, then you can prove that you're not a danger to anybody. Right. And then you got to spend probably 20 grand. And then after the fact, does that red flag affect you on your next check? Nobody's even addressed that. You know, I, I would imagine it would because uh, they had to do something to seize firearms from you. Usually that's that's like, a, you know, that's like a death sentence if, if you're a, a permit holder. 
It just so gets I, do have, I do have one question. If somebody comes and takes your firearms to a red flag law, and I'm sure the red flag laws are different in different states. Since you have to go to court to fight for those back, is that something where a court appointed attorney could assist you or would you have to pay for an attorney on your own? Because if you have an, if you have a right to an attorney, does it apply there? Uh, it, technically it's, it's supposed to, but the red flag in and of itself is unconstitutional. So it wouldn't surprise me if one state decided you had to, you know, you know, fund up your, on your own. But then again, something like that and being, being in law enforcement for 21 years, I would never, recommend anybody use a court appointed attorney on something like a red flag, you know, cause that's, no, no. <laughs> they're no. court appointed for a reason. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, that's, uh, it's a little bit, it's a little bit scary. Um, I'd like to get your take as somebody who is in law enforcement on what's going on with Washington and the sheriffs that are banding together to uh, basically fight back essentially by not doing anything um, against all of these horrible laws that happen in Washington. Yeah. I'm, I, so there's two sides to this coin. Uh, I I did a video where I gave him a shout out, good job. But I also mentioned in the video that's the way it should be anyway. Uh, some of us take our oath seriously. When I went to the military and when I came and started serving in my community, I take it serious. Uh, and I'm glad they're doing that. That's what they should do. Uh, it's 22 out of the 39 counties now. Uh, they've stepped up and said we're not we're not enforcing it. It's really unconstitutional. It's not even a law. Um, and on the flip side, uh, the AG in Washington is threatening the sheriff, saying if someone were to get a firearm in a way that we now deem illegal, and something happens, we're going to hold you liable. So they're under an immense uh, rock and a hard place. Well, between a rock and a hard place right now, where they're doing the right thing, but they're getting all kinds of pressure from you know, the, the left and don't forget it's an Antifa paradise up there too. So, uh, you know, my hat's off to them, but that's the way it should be. And each and every gun owner in that community for the, each one of those sheriffs should be calling them and thanking them, you know, bring them a coffee, buy, <laughs> buy them some lunch. Cause uh, they're putting their yeah. lives and, and cause they had death threats. They're putting their lives on the line just to enforce the constitution, which is, I never thought I would ever hear myself say that on this job. Yeah. Uh, well, sheriffs are duly elected, right? So yeah, uh, really, they're they're more. Uh, I guess uh, I, I'm not sure what the word is, but they're beholden to the to the voter more than they are the government officials. That is true. But when you get into an area that's a liberal paradise, to to make that stand, it's career suicide. So they're they're doing the right thing. They're not looking for the for the paycheck, you know, uh, like so many of our congressmen and women are. They don't care. About it and they just want that next paycheck. Um, so, you know, that's that's a tough spot for them <laughs> as a, per, you know, they still got to pay bills. So they know that probably the next election, they're all not going to get elected. Um, so it's, again, it's my hat off to them, but it should be that way. Yeah. Yeah. My hat's off to them as well. I wish we had more sheriffs like that around the country that, you know, were willing to step up because this really has transitioned to a local level. You know, you got New York, New Jersey, California, Washington, Oregon, uh, which is crazy because, you know, having a, a California firearms channel for the past five and a half, almost six years now, a lot of the people that told me, hey, get out of California, bro, move to Oregon, move to Washington. We love guns. Move here, move there. People tell me all the time, get out. Well, all these places that they told me to get out to are now in hot water. So, it's it's not a matter of moving. It's a matter of staying and fighting. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's easier to, to run away from it, but ultimately, as those of us who love the Constitution move, so do the people who could care less about it. So, And they have bigger numbers, obviously. Um, real quick, a thank you to Kyle Kieser and Andrew Amaral for uh, the super chat donation to the channel. Uh, Andrew says, keep up the great work. Um, let me put on pause real quick. I want to thank you, man. Um, my channel is only a little over three years old, and I was watching people like you that actually, you know, gave me the the, the get up and go to do this. Uh, I started in my basement when my son was holding my iPhone four back in the day, and uh, um, so thank you for doing what you do because you got me to do this. Uh, you know, oh yeah, man, uh, you're a lot bigger than I am uh, channel wise. So when I actually got to meet you, it was, you know, it was a, it was something that was impressive for me. So thank you. Yeah, likewise, man. I'm just another person like like everybody else. You know, I mean, for some reason. 
people seem to think when you get to a certain subscriber level, like you're, you know, you've, you've made something, you and I are just gun guys who have decided that if we can't do anything legislatively, we're going to use our voices to help. And, uh, you know, if I can inspire somebody that that's great, but unlike some of the bigger channels, which really do kind of piss me off, um, it's all about remaining humble because you have to remember, why did you start this channel? I started it because I love guns and that's why my channel is kind of a mix of reviews and second amendment stuff is because look, I'm still like, I'm still a gun guy who loves his gear and his equipment and his, you know, guns. But at the same time, I'm sick and tired of what's going on too. So, you know, I'm glad that I can inspire anybody who wants to start. If there's anybody watching that's thinking about starting a YouTube channel, uh, contrary to what you might think, there is no competition. If you need help and you want to contact, I'm sure either myself or Jared, uh, we'll help you get started. The more, more voices, the better. Oh yeah, absolutely. Without a doubt, I'd love to to help people, because especially like we've done this for you know you are almost six what six years. I'm well before you three years, so we've done the bumps that nobody told us about. So we can make it you know that much easier for you. Um, but yeah, just uh, hey, did you get your play button yet? I got my play button like right. a long time ago, but I got it at the exact same time they started doing all the strikes. <laughs> and so I took my play button and threw it in the closet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you're going to strike the second amendment and YouTube channels, I don't want your stupid play button. Awesome. So, yeah. Excellent. I just like, I, I never thought I'd even, I mean, when I hit, I think I hit 81 or 82,000 today and I, I never thought I'd get here, but I, I still want that freaking play button to just, I guess for that, for for the legitimacy where they have to recognize you, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I, I, it was a really good feeling getting it because people don't understand how hard you, you work at this stuff. I probably do, cause I do this full time. I probably do 70 hours a week just doing YouTube stuff, sitting behind the computer until two or three o'clock in the morning researching. You know, when I post a video on a, an important topic, let's say like carrying firearms in California in your vehicle, uh, I, I will stay up all night long just reading bills, just boring bills, just to make sure that you get it right so that you're not telling people something that's going to get them thrown in jail, you know, because, you know, you don't, you don't want that. So it, it does take a lot of work, man. But I've, I've probably learned um, more about stuff going on in the rest of the company else. So thank you very much for that. And I'm sure the people that are watching really appreciate that as well. So, uh, you know, just keep up the good work, man. We're all watching. and. You know, it's it's always good to be informed. That's that's a little bit difficult to do in this day and age. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. And same reason, like if anybody's out there, like you said, who's who's thinking about it, the only reason I started doing it is I was out of work, injured, I had my shoulder rebuilt, and I've always been somebody who's dug into laws and bills as a because of my career. And I just figured, uh, usually I would get phone calls, "Hey, what's this bill, and how's it gonna affect me?" And one day I just decided to film it, and here we are. Yeah. Well, hey, um, for those people out there in the state of California who are watching right now, um, I've been getting a question a lot lately. I wanted to bring this up because I think people in other states might find this a little bit interesting as well because we have pretty much everything illegal in California. But there actually are two AR pistols on the handgun roster now, believe it or not. Um, the thing is, they are single shot. That's been my the biggest question I get. What about them? What makes them California legal? There's no um, gas block. There's no gas tube. There's no way to install one. It's there's no nothing. And it's uh, basically just a single shot AR pistol, but it is on the roster, which leads me to believe it's on the roster. You can modify it afterwards to make it semi-automatic because just like with, let's say, like a Glock, we can only have Glock Gen 3. But you can see here, there's absolutely nothing about this that's Gen 3. It just started off life that way. So all those watching you know to you take a look at that it's interesting now is that the uh when we were at the show, i saw a uh it was a double action uh, ar pistol it was basically a revolver for all intents and purposes is that the same thing no uh, -uh. so this one actually has a magazine the magazine um uh is just you know standard 10 round ar mag everything about it's standard just has a buffer tube doesn't come with a brace i think you can get the brace maybe after oh, i think in california actually the braces are illegal so I think it's just going to stay a buffer tube. So nonetheless, just an AR pistol with like an 11 inch or 10 inch barrel. Cool. Cool. Well, at least it's an option. I mean, yeah. it's terrible that we have to do that, but 
Uh, Jolly Roger USA. Uh, I just thank bring you. it up because he says, uh, "Sorry to cut you off." Yeah, I just bring it up. I'm sorry. People just keep asking me about it this week, and for some reason, that seems to be kind of the big thing as people are noticing it's on the roster right now. But uh, yeah, and that's another thing you got to watch out for too. Is, is on a national level. Remember how everybody says that Kamala uh, is, you know, you know, everybody knows that Kamala is bad for guns. But when people say, don't California, my Texas, don't California, you know, whatever, right? My North Carolina, it, that's if she becomes president, she just California, the entire country, because all of her thoughts and ideas on gun control, all of the things that she fought for, because she actually um, fought these in the Ninth Circuit uh, when they, you know, for instance, gun apocalypse. OK, gun apocalypse is one of her babies. Apocalypse in California was that whole new assault weapons rebranding thing uh, where they redefined what an assault weapon is. She fought that. It went up to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals and everything else. And she's still, you know, she was she was pretty active in fighting that. And so she knows what can make it through the court system um, an attorney general. And if she makes it to the president's desk, she will basically Californicate everything. Yeah, absolutely. And the, I had that conversation with a lot of people and they don't get it like uh like New Hampshire, I'm sorry, Vermont, just just, just north of here, and and they love their freaking Bernie Sanders, but they, they don't realize what his policies are going to do. And what's scary is the guy is in the first weekend after he announced he's made six million dollars in donations. Oh yeah, that's that's scary. I mean, how do they how do they answer? I guess they just spin it and blow it off. But have you have you been seeing the video going around of Bernie Sanders celebrating his honeymoon in Russia? Yeah, yeah, singing Russian and doing all that stuff. You just got to wonder, the guy's a socialist, you know, he, he had his honeymoon in Russia. He, you know, doesn't seem to really have a problem with Venezuela and what's going on there. You don't hear him speak out about it. You know, you don't hear him speak negatively about it. Um, you know, he's a scary dude for more guns. Like, he's, a, you know, an end of the country as you know it kind of guy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And they keep rehashing that video where he was saying, you know, in other countries, you see people in line for food. That's a good thing. That means the rich people don't have oh, it. Yeah, yeah. He's totally off his freaking rocker. Not to mention he's 77 now. So if he were to get elected, he'd be like 150. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's going to be a long fight. There's generations of people who hate guns out there. And being the fact that there's generations of guns that people who hate, you know, or generations of people who hate guns out there means we're going to have generations worth of fight. And so it's not anything that's going to end anytime soon. And you think people, you know, who are in their 70s, you know, have been involved in the fight for gun rights forever. And it's just going to always be around. So we always have to fight it. It's not anything we're ever going to completely fix. Absolutely. And it's not going to ever get easier to. It's only going to get more uh, more intense, especially now the social media. They can, they can say one thing like Jesse Smollett. And uh, before you know it, the guy's got more backing than anybody around until they found out he was freaking lying. But <laughs> yeah. What really kills me is half of these stupid bills that are being. You know, not essentially penned, but they're being endorsed by these high school kids, man. High school kids. I mean, when I was in high school, man, I screwed up so bad so many times. You don't know. You don't know life yet. You may think you know life, but you don't know life. When you hear somebody say guns are bad because of this and that, you just believe them. That's just what you do as a kid, you know. Right. And so a lot of these kids are are taking front and center spots on gun control debate. And these politicians like morons are listening to everything they have to say. And in some cases are getting on bended knee for these kids. I, I don't understand where politicians are even coming from anymore. It doesn't make sense. Now, to me. Feelings now. I mean, like, look at AOC. Yeah. She, it just came out. I think it was today that uh, the, the funding behind her new green deal was George Soros. Shocker. Uh, yeah. They just they don't go off of facts anymore. It's just off of you know the the, the way the country feels at the moment. Uh, real quick, there's been a uh, chat's moving pretty quick. If you guys want to throw some questions up there, whether it's for myself or for for Will, uh, we'll we'll take some questions here um, as we're we're chatting. So uh, ask them away. Just make sure I can see them. You know, we use some caps or something. Make a point out because it's going by pretty quick. So now that you've doing this thing from California, what's like the one thing you want people to know? about you uh or, or about what's going on behind like in california because i know i get things like uh you know those massachusetts people are screwing up my state what do you want them to know if there was something that that like is a pet peeve and you want to get off your chest 
Uh, I just wish more. I just wish more people would would get off their ass. You know, I, I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir, you know, especially with a lot of my subscribers and your subscribers. These the, the people who are watching this video right now are mostly active people who will go vote. They will get up. They will do things. You know, they take an active role in protecting their own constitutional rights. But I know in California, there are a lot of people who do not get up there and vote. Um, when the whole gun apocalypse thing happened and they wanted, you know, all the new registration, all that stuff was going down. Um, I was driving around dropping off petitions and stuff to different places and driving down to Ventura, you know, a couple hours away and, and dropping off petitions everywhere. And it seemed like maybe we we're going to get a little bit of, of momentum to have enough signatures to be put on the ballot to overturn it. And just not enough people came out, you know, we needed a certain amount to actually show up and nobody showed up. And then, so the election came that November. And again, the numbers weren't there on the ballots. The thing is, you know how many people are coming to vote against. Uh, a, you can see that it lost, you know, 100,000 to 400,000. It's only 100,000 people actually went out to vote no on a gun control bill. And I know that with the millions of people in California, there's way more gun owners than that. We have, I think we have more background checks done for new firearms in California than any other state in the country. And you know, that's that's maybe not 100% true. It might be Texas, but I think we're at least in the top three for, you know, the most background checks done for new firearms. They're, they're out there. We just need them to do something. Yeah, same here. My, my biggest pet peeve now that I'm, you know, doing this on a national level as far as bills and, and rallies is we're so, so fractured. You know, you take a group of gun owners, say you get 100 people, and there's probably 20 different factions in there where there's so much infighting. We just need to get all on the same freaking boat and row in the same direction for once. You know, you get the shotgunners who will say, ah, the AR-15, I don't use that. I don't care. And they'll they'll let anything fly down the pike. And then, you know, you get the guys who have the AR-15s who are like, oh, I don't want to talk about those FUDs. They don't, they don't care about our, our rights. Something like this, like we need to all pull together. And, you know, it's I think if we did – we're like an unstoppable force because there's actually there are Democrats who are with us for gun gun laws, um, and I think if we all just got together on that, it would it would be very impressive. Yeah, I agree. the The problem that I have with um, some of the people who still call themselves Democrat gun owners, the the Democratic Party isn't what it used to be. Okay, this it's not the JFK Democratic Party anymore. Okay, uh, that's not what you know your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. That was the Democrat party of the old days. That doesn't exist anymore. Okay. So by going along and supporting them and voting them in these days, uh, you're essentially cutting your own throat and that's all there is to it. And I'm not saying that Democrats or that Republicans are perfect because Republicans are half of the problem. <laughs> what we need in there is somebody with clear vision to say, step out of the way, this is the constitution. You're not right. You're not right. That's right. Let's follow that. And so until we get that, man, uh, it's just, you know, bad news, but I'm telling you, Democrats just, they're, you can't be a Democrat gun owner and say you're for the second amendment. That's just how yeah, I feel. Cool. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we've got a question from dog, the dog, cool name. Uh, he says, is there anybody fighting for the California ammo law that's coming July one? And for those who don't know about it, you want to touch on that real quick? Okay, so the California ammo law that's coming has to do with background checks uh, uh, for ammunition purchases. So uh, coming on July 1st, 2019, you'll have to pay a $1 fee for every single transaction that you make. Uh, if you were to buy one box, turn around and buy another box, you have to do two different background checks, each one costing a dollar. If you are not in the system, so you don't have a registered firearm in the state of California or what's called the CFAR system, if you're not in that system, it could actually take 10 days before you could take possession of your firearm and you have to pay 20 bucks. Uh, the dollar background check and then an extra 19 is what they're calling it. Um, right now, from what I understand, there has been an amicus brief file, uh, filed in the court system. And so they have started it, but I don't know how much further they can go with it until it's actually been implemented. So just like with the assault weapons regulations, they couldn't really fight back until they knew what the regulations were. Uh, this is kind of the same thing. So I'm not sure if they have the system in place to do the background checks yet. For instance, they sell ammunition at Walmart. 
is can Walmart conduct a background check? I think they're going to wait and see before uh, they really get too deep in it. But I believe the Firearms Policy Coalition, um, Cal Guns Foundation, on the train with this one. Good, good. Um, do you know? Uh, maybe you, you might not be aware, but. Are they putting that background check on CHP, California Highway Patrol, or is it going to be the FBI? Because the FBI has told a couple different states who have passed their own uh, background check uh, or enhanced background checks that, you know, basically, you know, we have trouble doing our own stuff. We're not doing yours, too. Yeah, so it doesn't apply to law enforcement. It doesn't apply to most government entities, you know, so FBI, U.S. Marshals, things like that, Highway Patrol. Um it doesn't apply to FFLs. It doesn't apply if you have your FFL, your Curo and Relic, or if you have a certificate of eligibility, um, stuff like that. It doesn't apply to those people, but those are like very rare instances. For the general public, it applies to everybody. You know, it doesn't matter if you have your concealed carry permit uh, where you've you know undergone extra scrutiny, you, you still have to under, you know, undergo it. Now, who, what agency is going to be doing those background checks? Do you guys know that yet? Is it going to be in-house in California or are they going to go through NICS? No, it's going to be in-house. Uh, some, something through the DOJ, but I'm not sure. Okay. So. Let's see. Let's try to grab another question here. Uh, let's see. There's a lot of people saying they, <laughs> they, nobody wants to talk to FUDs. I <laughs> can't blame you. Uh, let's see. Load-bearing vest movement start at Capitol Hill. Uh, so let me ask you this, and we'll, we'll put us both on the spot. What do you think about I, – I was kicking around for a week the possibility of uh, like a march on Washington type deal. A, we would need somebody much bigger than us to to, to pull it off, and, and the funding is ridiculous. But the more that I've thought about it, like I don't even think that would matter because when those of us who follow – like we're fighting for our right – uh, they don't really care. We're not going to get the the media to cover it. Uh, and when I the reason I said that is because it was a year and a half ago. Matt um, from Never Enough Ammo, when he did that, uh, you know, rallied all fifty state capitals. I I chaired the the one in Massachusetts. I ran the the rally in Boston, and there was like we had a hundred that came out to Boston. And that was one of the best attended ones in the country. Some of them had like six people. Some had two people. Uh, we don't show up for anything. Like the same reason we're not all together in the fight, and there's so many factions. What do you What do you think about that? Do you think something like that would be? Uh, yeah. or not? <laughs> to be honest with you, man, I, I it just I kind of gotten back and forth on it. So every once in a while, you know, I I get this real. It's it's kind of hard to explain, but I'm sure everybody out there who's watching who's angry too kind of gets that same feeling. It's sort of like that feeling you get when uh, Mel Gibson is charging with the flag when you're watching the movie Patriot, yeah. right? And you get like, that's it, dude. I'm grabbing my AR. We're out. We're doing this shit. Let's go, right? And you get that, you get that feeling. And you're like, let's, let's rally. Let's do something. Let's get everybody together. You get pumped. You get hyped. And I've done it. I've spoken at several rallies in California. The media doesn't show up. Nobody covers it other than the group that's there that already supports you anyway. There's nobody really there to do anything or affect any change. Right now, I think where we need to focus our efforts. So let's say it would have cost you 40 bucks in gas, another $40 in food for the day. And, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, neither of us gets paid by any uh, gun uh, advocacy groups. So Fire and Policy Coalition, you got a Gun Owners of American shirt on, right? None of these places pays us, but we know what, what works and giving them money to fight back in courts, I think is, is better spent energy than it is to rally right now. Yeah. It's, I think the same thing. Cause I, I kind of have an idea how much it actually costs to run these, these cases, especially if it's going to go all the way to the top uh, and it's astronomical. I mean, lawyers aren't cheap, especially ones who are in a specialty uh, like guns. I mean, that's, it's a moneymaker. Um, and I, I agree. I've, I've told a lot of people when I get a lot of emails and messages and stuff like that to, you know, write a check to GOA, uh, write, you know, write a check to FCP. Because, uh, and I say it in a bunch of my videos, I always say support those who support you. So don't forget your your state level uh, agencies too, your your, your groups. Uh, if you have a group in your state that's that's doing the good thing, you know, throw them, throw them some change every now and then because it, it does make a huge difference. 
Uh, Scuba3162, thank you. Uh, did a little super chat here. He says, uh, thanks for watching our backs here in Florida. Um, so, so thank you, sir, for the for the shout out there. Um, you know, Florida, uh, Florida's scary, dude. Yeah, yeah. Florida, oh, once, once we come at it, they're coming at it like full bore, man. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, if I don't know if you watch the channel, um, buddy of mine, Jarhead6. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he is a Floridian. And he talks about uh, Florida gun laws at times, too. And sometimes he'll text me and be like, hey, bro, <laughs> have you heard of this? Have you heard of that? And I'm shocked to hear that this is coming out of Florida. And it's it's got me a little bit nervous that Florida's kind of going purple right now. Yeah, it's it's nuts. Uh, I mean, it's happened in most places. Like, uh, if I had to look at, like, the last year doing this on, on my end, you, you get a lot of those comments like, it'll never happen here. You know, never, ever happen here. And then probably two, three weeks later, I'm saying, yeah, well, there's a red flag submitted in your state. What are you going to do about it? You know, uh, it's, yeah. it's happening everywhere, guys and gals. That 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 saying just doesn't hold any water anymore. It's getting crazy. Um, yeah, it's it's true, man. So here's a question from uh, Ian Ian Moon or Moan, M-O-O-N-E. Sorry, Ian, if I butchered your name. He says, uh, where are the firearms manufacturers uh, fighting for these laws? Have you heard anything? Because it's just crickets over here. We have Smith and Wesson here in Mass, and I mean, they did make a sizable donation uh, for that uh, for the case we had in, in Mass, where Maura Healy just reinterpreted a, a 28-year-old law overnight for the uh, for the AWB here. Uh, but have you heard anything? Any any gun makers out by your way? No, I, I mean, other than you know Springfield Armory screwing over its local population, um, it, it is it's crickets, man. And it let's be honest, it. Gun control, the fear of gun control drives money to the gun industry. And that's why a lot of times you'll see me support smaller gun companies um, that are not so so mainstream because it's the smaller manufacturers that will actually donate to help us. So you got like Hank Strange over there with uh, Safety Harbor Firearms. You know, I know he's, he's active in what he does. Um, over here in California, we have... Um, not necessarily a firearms manufacturer, but they're an accessories manufacturer, which is a, a, a base five weapon system. I know that they do some good work in the Second Amendment community, alpha shooting sports. But again, they're kind of local. You know, these these big guys, I don't really hear anything. What I know that Radian Weapon Systems is setting something up in Oregon. So again, you have Radian. I mean, they're they're stepping up, but they're not one of, you know, the big three, so to speak. Right, yeah, and right. they have all the money in the world, and they make all of the money off of us, so they sh they should chip in. But yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, for instance, you got uh, Remington over there, right? You know, Remington's got stuff shoved down their throat left and right. Um, being the state that they're actually manufacturing in, I know that they get a lot of um, leeway with what they do, so to speak. Uh, but they don't do anything to help everybody else who would be buying their products there, and that's that's kind of where I have a problem. These you know, these are your core customers. You know, we've supported you. We've given our money to you, hard-earned money. Uh, you know, let's go ahead and stand up and fight. Yeah, and Remington, I don't know if you heard, they're actually leaving leaving the state. They're moving south. Oh, no, I did not hear that. Yeah, they just announced that, uh, I think it was this, this past week, they're, they're packing the doors and, and I'm packing up and shutting the doors and leaving. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're moving to Alabama, actually. Yeah, but it's, again, it's like you just said, for those people who, and I get a lot of them from Alabama, actually, who say, oh, Alabama will never we'll never have gun control in Alabama. Man, I'm telling you, watch out. You ever seen that? There's a meme that's going around on Instagram. It's funny. It's probably been going around for like years now. And it's of a, a boat. And the boat is sinking. And there's the Californians are in the water side of the boat. And there's two people from the rest of the country uh, on the other side of the boat. And they're saying, thank God I'm not in California. <laughs> and it shows them both thinking, look, we're all in the same boat, man. Yeah. You know, we're all going to hit the water eventually. It's just we hit first. Yeah, it's, it's, and that's the problem. Like, you know, people don't even see the big picture like that. And whatever happens, like, I, I, whatever happens in California comes to Massachusetts. What happens in Massachusetts goes to California. There's there's the gun control, get the pillars of gun control now are, you know, it's Mass, Cali, uh, New York, Jersey, uh, Ohio. Uh, and you got a couple others sprinkled in that are that trying to impress everybody else, but it, it's they don't seem to get it. Like whatever is tested here makes its way to the rest of the country if if it goes unchallenged, I guess. Well, yeah, it's it's 
So, for instance, rulings, ru rulings matter at a circuit level if the, the Supreme Court's not going to hear it. For instance, when the Ninth Circuit said that uh, concealed carry, they determined that concealed carry is not constitutional. It's not protected under the Constitution. Um, the, they tried to take that up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court refused to hear it. Right. So that remains law under the Ninth Circuit, that concealed carry is not a constitutionally protected right. So right, you yeah. have to worry about Circuit the courts make laws. The flip side is actually the same court uh, came out and, and it was a case where they said that uh, it, the Second Amendment extends to open carry. So you, you can you're allowed to open carry now in the ninth. It is being brought up to an en banc by all thirteen judges, but it's like the sa same onus. But they chose both different sides and two different uh, opportunities. Yeah, yeah, it's being heard en banc. I I actually think that the Ninth Circuit is going to uphold that open carry is constitutional because I don't think that they want that one going up to the Supreme Court with the balance of power. So the balance of power, when that uh, case actually hit the Ninth Circuit Court, that was when, um, uh, what's his name, the, the justice that went through that whole rape yeah. hearing. Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh. Um, when Kavanaugh was being confirmed was when that case hit the Ninth. And so the en banc, or before it was on bonk and the three judge panel heard it and they said that open carry is considered constitutional. The attorney general of Hawaii then kicked it back and said, you know, we want an on bonk hearing uh, through the whole ninth circuit. That is when they kind of delayed whether or not they were going to do it. And then when Kavanaugh went, Kavanaugh was confirmed. Um, they said, okay, we're going to go ahead. We're going to hear it on bonk, but I think they're going to go ahead and side with open carry uh, just for the fact that if it goes to the Supreme court now, there's a high likelihood that they would uphold that. Or plus they can use it. So there's a viewer here, you Mike. Think, man. Oh, you, you blacked out. You got your back. All right. There's a viewer here, Sorry. Mike, who uh, has made two uh, two uh, chats here, and uh, he says he likes the racing pattern in your beard. <laughs> what? He, he says he likes your beard, the way the coloring in your beard. <laughs> Look, man, I could dye it look youthful or i could just age gracefully all right uh, has it got a racing pattern <laughs> i'm not 100 sure but i screwed it up for you huh buddy okay hold on let's get the track back together there we go <laughs> cool man um, the ship people notice. <laughs> all right guys and gals let's see it's been reported that this is uh mark 18 mod zero it's been reported that many, including security guard camps, were shot with pellets. I don't know what he's referring to. If you could come back to that, a lot of people are talking about the, uh, um, what was it the Coast Guard, the guy or the Navy guy who got caught in uh, with all the firearms, and they said he's a terrorist. Did you see? Did you hear about that? Yeah, the Coast Guard guy. He, was, he had a hit list, included Cory Booker and a bunch of high-profile Democrats. Yeah, he had like six guns on the table. They called it an arsenal. Yeah, it was an arsenal. He had like 430 rounds. <laughs> yeah, that always kills me. I'll watch the local news and they'll be like, we got six guns from this suspect and over 900 rounds of ammunition. Like they always emphasize 900. And I look behind me, I'm like, oh my God, you know, honey, if they broke in this house right now, yeah, what it would look like on the news, they would have to rent a field just to put everything out. Like it would look like I'm ready to take over the country. Yeah, 900 rounds is like a two day class. It's nothing. <laughs> Yeah, it takes nothing. Uh, two boxes of 22. <laughs> um, a couple people are saying, you know, thanking you for coming on. A lot of people love what you do over there, so I want to pass that Thanks, on. Guys. I really do appreciate it. I, what's crazy is subscribers like yours and mine are the best subscribers you're going to find on YouTube because they're Patriot subscribers. So, and I mean that wholeheartedly. When you read comment sections from other people that, let's say, just do reviews but just will not speak out on the Second Amendment, the comment section looks a lot different. But the people that watch channels like yours and mine, those are the patriots that are in the rest of the country. So it's like being surrounded by, you know, like-minded people. It's awesome. Yeah, it's one big brotherhood, man. It's awesome. That's why I keep doing it. All right. Uh, we'll take uh, – what time is it? Eight, almost 8.30. I told uh, Will I would only keep him for about an hour. So we'll take uh, three more questions, throw some questions up. I'll, I'll pick them randomly as they, they fly by because uh, he's got a family. So do I. And this is my only day off. I've done 13 days straight, and it's been crazy. 
You're a workaholic, man. Oh, it sucks. And then, you know, and then it's another thing I didn't realize is that as the channel grows, it takes more and more out of your time. So like, and I do the, the news, so it happens like that. So at any given time, I could do 50, 60 hours a week at work. And then at least that here on this <clears throat> part-time job, it's crazy. Well, while you're, while you're looking at questions, uh, what do you got coming up on the channel? Anything, anything big? I know we were kind of talking about something off, off air. Yeah. Yeah. I got a, I got a, uh, an AR pistol build coming up um, that I won't, I'll have to do editing magic on YouTube because you can't show that anymore. Uh, but uh, the full video will be up on Gunstreamer and uh, YouTube and uh, a couple other outlets that I'm on. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And right away it, it angers a lot of people because here in Massachusetts, we, the people can't do that. Um, I only get to do it because it's, it's a weapon for work. Uh, so so I am going to do, I'm going to make one, build one. Uh, so that should be something good to, good to do um, with, with Cal, Cal over at Optics Planet. Um, got a couple, couple other things. Um, um, Lynx Defense just sent me a couple, uh, uh, a, uh, they have a, an ankle uh, IFAC kit, which uh, I am falling in love with and doing a review on that. And uh, that'll be out soon. And, and, and I decided to, wear that after a shooting with uh, Las Vegas Metro, like right after we left SHOT Show, basically. Uh, but uh, they utilized a tourniquet that was on his ankle to, to save somebody's life. And, you know, it was one of those things was like, aha, why haven't I thought of that? So he, he needs those, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have that up here soon, too. What about yourself? Anything big coming down the pipe? Um, I, I, you know, I got a bunch bunch of random stuff. Uh, today, spent the whole day in the desert working on the, the this Glock 34. I've been building this thing for like a year. Because I wanted, I wanted one gun that was from the ground up, everything that I wanted. And so I've been working a lot on this one right here. Um, I've gone through thousands of rounds on that thing already. And uh, I'm going to be working on that review. But other than that, man, there, you know, in, in the new year, a lot of it's going to be law stuff, Second Amendment related news. And that's how it goes, especially with Gavin Newsom and, as governor here in California. Uh, for those of you who are watching, who are either subscribed to my channel or just interested in California, um, get ready because they're actually putting through or, or reintroducing another precursor ban uh, bill. So they want to ban parts that could be used for uh, the manufacture or, or self building of uh, what they would consider to be assault weapons. So gas blocks, triggers, uppers, you know, things like stocks, buffer tubes, you name it. You'd have to get all that stuff through an FFL and a background check. So they're resubmitting that. And uh, Newsom has already said if it makes it through, he'll sign it. We have a super majority of Democrats uh, in the California legislature. So just be aware. Uh, you got to get noisy now. It's time to uh, time to start screaming. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's have you run into this? Uh, there are companies who I kind of jumped on one of them uh, last week during the live. And uh, like they won't do business with anybody in Massachusetts, even though they are 100 percent legal products. Uh, they're not part of any ban. They just choose not to do any business because they're basically in fear of the gray area or the AG. Do you have any anybody who's ever like you've reached out for a product and they won't send it, or you go to buy ammo and they won't send it? Uh, I have I have a problem with with two companies. Um, one's Brownells. Um, I get a lot of shipment problems from Brownells. If I try and order something that is perfectly legal, uh, but maybe it's questionable to them because they didn't do their homework. Um, I've had issues where Brownells won't ship something out. Um, another place that I, I've had problems with in California is uh, Palmetto State Armory. And that's actually somebody who's who I've worked with. So Palmetto State Armory uh, makes great rifles and stuff like that. I mean, it's all, you know, most of it's budget stuff and easy to afford, which is fine. That's what a lot of people want. But they don't make it in a configuration that you can send here. And when you order grips or if you order, let's say, like a pistol barrel or something like that, they may not ship it to California, even though pistol barrels are perfectly fine. You can order a pistol upper in the state of California. If it's not put onto a lower, it's not considered illegal. So I can have all of that stuff. It's not illegal until you put it together and it becomes a functional gun, but they still give you problems with that and drives me nuts. But I will say this. I found a place who will accept things. They're in Las Vegas. Um, they actually reach out to me on Instagram. So they have an FFL in Las Vegas. And if a company will not ship something to you because it's questionable, they will determine whether or not it's questionable and make any necessary modifications there in Vegas at their FFL and then transfer it to your FFL. 
So let's say I see a gun on Palmetto I like, I transfer it to them in Vegas, they make any modifications that would be necessary for it to be legal in California and then ship it to my FFL. So there's, there's people out there that are working around it. Yeah. My, the one I jumped on last week was, was Palmetto. Uh, I mean, they won't do any business with anybody in mass, including law enforcement. Like if my, if my department wanted to buy uh, a suppress, you know, a flash tighter, they won't even sell, sell it to anybody, no matter what. And uh, I kind of went off on, on the, the poor lady on the phone and said, you know, you guys are part of the problem. You're supposed to be standing by the people fighting in these, you know, these slave states, as I call them. Uh, but they, I mean, they wouldn't even sell a sling. They wouldn't, wouldn't even sell me a sling. So it's, yeah, uh, that's, that sucks. That's, un that's unacceptable. You know, I mean, it really is. And I, I've actually talked to the owner of Palmetto and had a conversation with him and kind of fought for people like us. And while he agreed with me, I could tell in his voice that he wasn't really interested in taking any action on it. So I told him, I said, look, I said, let's talk about it on a business level, purely business level. Okay. People in California want stuff. Okay. We have a government that's shoving this crap down our throat, but people, we, we still want this stuff and people in other States that are restricted still want this stuff. If you could find a way to get it to them legally, we're not asking you to break any laws, but if you could find a way to get it to them legally, that's extra income. Who the hell says no to that? And he agreed with me, but you could tell he wasn't going to do anything about it. That sucks. And there's like uh, another thing here in mass is like nine out of 10 companies. If you purchase ammo online, they won't ship it, even though it's 100% legal. There's been nothing, you know, to stop it, but they just, they're, I don't know what it is. They're afraid of the big bad, you know, Mara Healy. That sucks. Um, let's see. I lose you. You all digitized. Oh, there he is. Okay, he's back. Um, so let me see. Um, how is Daytona Tactical? Have you done anything with Daytona Tactical? Have you heard about them? No. Uh, Somebody's saying that their uppers are pretty good, and we should check them out. Um, all right, let's do. There's a bunch of stuff about Palmetto and stuff like that going back and forth. <laughs> Can you guys do? Uh, uh, Polymer 80s in, in California? No. No? Uh, I mean, yes and no. So you can you can still do a Polymer 80 rifle, a little, a little lower, you know, um, but you'd have to go through a registration process. I mean, they say you have to go through a registration process and you have to have a piece of metal inserted into it to have the serial number and it's a whole, they make you jump through hoops. But then if you want to do a Polymer 80 pistol, like a Glock or something like that, the second you make it, it's considered an off-roster handgun, and so it's technically illegal. Really? Yeah. It has to pass the roster. It has to pass California's drop tests. <laughs> Chris Sig doesn't even pass drop tests. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. But there's actually, uh, as a matter of fact, there's a movement right now. Uh, which you have heard of. Oh. You're breaking up a little bit over there, Will. Um, uh, yeah, tree. Let's see. All right. Uh, well, I want to I wanna thank everybody uh, for joining. It's, it's been an hour. I don't want to keep Will away from his, his kids and his wife any longer than I have to. Uh, thank you, sir, for taking time out of your life to come on the channel. Uh, I hope you'd be willing to do it again sometime. I was very happy to meet you in SHOT Show, and uh, next year I'm going, so we'll have to hook up again. Um, to all of the Daily Shooters uh, viewers that are here, thank you for jumping in. Thank you for your time. Uh, hope you like the uh, channel. Check it out a little bit, and you know, maybe think about uh, joining us on this side as well. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm, I'm open anytime. This is my first chat that I've done in five years of being on YouTube, so you know it's kind of new for me, but... You know, it's fun. I like it. I, I love the channel. Keep up what you do. You know, again, we're just regular guys trying to get the word out there. So anytime you want me to come on, if, if there's a big topic that comes up and, uh, you know, you just want to shoot the breeze on it, let's do it. Let's make it happen. So uh, I just would you know want to say that regardless of numbers or who's been doing it longer, everybody needs to be watching this stuff. So guys, make sure you subscribe to his channel. It's uh, information needs to get out there. Thanks appreciate again, man. I really appreciate you uh, having me on.
Thank you, man. Anytime. And uh, when when we log off here, just stay on. We'll uh, we'll close up. You and I on the on the backside here. But uh, thank you, everybody, again uh, so much. I hope you enjoy these little little live uh, things. We got a couple more that uh, are going to be coming up soon. Uh, the Liberty Doll, if everybody remembers her, she's coming back on. And uh, I also got Coda Boy Thirty Two, who uh, we're going to do something together as well. So thank you all. Uh, until we see each other again, this is Jared from Guns and Gadgets. Will from the Daily Shooter. Be safe. Stay vigilant, carry your weapon, take care, everybody. Good night from uh, Frigid, Massachusetts. Have a good one. Good